far apart we've grown One of these days I'm gonna sit down and write a long letter To all the good friends Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out One of Those Days by Neil Young, an absolute all-time acoustic classic. A lot of requests for this the other day when I did Cinnamon Girl. Actually, most of the requests for like, were for Like a Hurricane, which I'm going to do as well, but that's an electric one with a really long meandering solo, so this is one that I could uh, get out a little bit quicker for you. And it's relatively simple to play. There's just a couple of parts. Uh, most of the complexity with Neil's stuff is about how you strum it and how you play it. Um, more so than the chords but there are some interesting things going on in that department as well so first thing to mention it's in double drop d tuning so the two outside strings are tuned down a tone so you end up with a d a d g b and d if you put down a regular d chord and lift off your second finger you get a nice big string of d's and a's there which should kind of give you a pretty good clue as to if your guitar is nicely in tune or not. Now he doesn't play some of the grips in the kind of the, the standard way. I'm going to try and show you the way that he plays some things that I, I'm not comfortable with using the thumb over for a B chord and stuff which I, I can, I'm kind of working on trying to do it because I like to co copy Neil's style uh, when I'm doing his tunes but things like that I just feels awkward for me. So I'll try and give you his option as well as uh, what I think he's you know the way I think he's doing it as usual I've done a bit of research and I'll leave some links to some live versions of him playing it so you can see the way he's doing it as well and see where I got my information from which might help you again always better to copy from Neil than it is to copy from me so there's only like I said two sequences a verse sequence and a, a chorus sequence so let me take you first of all through the verses and that's what's happening on the intro as well so Neil starts with an A chord with a traditional kind of a fingering here using fingers one two and three all in a row at the second fret now I teach A chord with that fingering because it gets more fingers closer to the fret which means it's easier to get a good note if you want to play it this way which I tend to do when I'm doing Neil tunes because that's the way he does it you do have to press extra hard with that first finger to get that note to ring out because it's so far away from the fret the only way to get it out is to press it a little really hard sometimes I feel like it makes it go slightly out of tune but perhaps in a way that adds to the stylist uh, you know the, the quality of the tune so that's why I tend to play it that way rather than the way that I would regularly play an A chord so that's the first chord the second chord is an F sharp minor now again there's a couple of little minor niggles here uh, first finger is covering the thinnest three or possibly the thinnest four strings can't really tell I can't I don't know I'm not hearing that note in there but it, it's possible it could be it, I know kind of Neil generally tends to play the minor chords with just the two fingers on the thicker string so he would be likely to play that but it doesn't sound like that to me it sounds like this with the little finger on the fourth string so that would be third finger on the fourth fret thicker string muting the fifth string little finger on the fourth fret of the fourth string and first finger barring the thinnest three strings okay but it could be little finger on the fifth string and first finger covering the thinnest four strings that would be more kind of stylistically the way Neil would play okay so it's up to you I, I think that one sounds more like the record to me but there you go you could you could choose either one of those and it's not many people are going to recognize the difference now the last chord you could now think well I just play a standard D chord but definitely definitely Neil's using this grip of a D chord which is the open thickest two strings then third finger, fourth fret of the fourth string, first finger is doing a bar on the thinnest three strings, second finger, third fret, second string. Lovely chord. It's actually because of the tuning, it ends up being a D sus2. If you want to have a regular D chord to put 
little finger down there on the fourth fret of the uh, thinner string. That'll give you a standard D chord, which I think occasionally I can I can hear that note sneaking in there, although I think he's playing that chord that way. I'll talk about that when we get to the chorus, but that's the standard way of doing it. So we have this A, two, three, four, F sharp minor, to D. And again, that's A, F sharp minor, to D. Now there's obviously more going on there. You can hear that different notes are being accented and stuff, and that comes down to what's going on with the strumming hand. Now, you can see videos of Neil playing this without a pick. It's very much a down, strums are done with the thumb, and then first finger, Occasionally there's, there might be an upstroke with the thumb, but it's pretty unusual. It's normally with the first finger. But he's also quite careful about what notes he plays when he's strumming. You can hear right at the beginning... You don't, you don't hear that note right away, so it's not... It's not, it's not so bold or whatever. It's a lot more intricate and delicate and... I think that's one of the tricks here with this sort of thing is to start experimenting with. See if you can get this used to the idea of kind of strumming with the with the. You're still strumming with the arm like you would with the pick, but you're strumming down with the thumb, and then little upstrokes with the first finger, but being selective about where you play them from. a good pattern quite common for Neil to be playing so I'm going down up from the second string down up from the thinner string up from the second string now that's not the pattern that he's using like this all of the way it's not consistent but that's a good way to practice kind of getting used to controlling where your first finger goes I think potentially the very first one is that Okay, so it's all thumb. That's what it sounds like to me, because I'm not hearing that note till later in the bar. It'll be one, two, three, and four. Okay, roughly. But again, listen to it and suss out how you want to approach the rhythm. Again, you don't hear that thinner string till a little later. generic pattern that you could use. And that's not exactly right, but that's, that'll get you kind of most of the way there. If you want to get it more intricate than that, then you're going to have to start listening to the record a lot and just trying to hear out exactly what strings are being picked. and, and to be honest, some of that should be kind of down to you. It's it's difficult for me as a teacher to say, like, I don't want to show you exactly that because I have written some of it out kind of as close to exactly as I could get it, but I don't feel like that's the spirit of it. You know, I, I'm trying to learn it as exactly as I can so I can share with you the genius of Neil's guitar playing. But I think part of the genius of Neil's guitar playing is that he just made it up and experimented with it, and it's different every time. So I'd encourage you to explore it on your own as well and learn from Neil and learn from the cool things he does, but then try and find a, a way of interpreting it on your own. That's kind of how I feel my approach should be. So for the verses and the choruses, that's it. That's all at the beginning. Now, I'm noticing as well, sometimes I'm using a down stroke with my first finger because that gets a bit of nail in there. It gets a bit more of a... So, and that's, I know that's something that Neil does as well, is to be able to use different parts of his fingers to create a different texture. Um, I must admit, when I'm playing this style on my own, so if I'm not playing it along with the record, I tend to use a bit more... Um, you can look it up on my uh, website. I think I call it melodic percussive fingerstyle, which is basically Neil's 
technique. I just gave it a funny name, but he, he tends to have the bass notes on beats one and three with the thumb, and then you can put a nice little hit on two and four with your hand to get these. Now, that's not what he's doing on the record, okay? I should just specify that straight off. That's not exactly what he's playing here, but I think it sounds nice on this kind of tune if you're playing it on your own. In a, in a, and he tends to play it a little more like that when he's playing it live solo acoustic because it gives it a little bit more rhythmic drive, particularly a tune like this quite long. You need to have some variances in the verses and the choruses and the way it's played and between the different verses just to give it some dynamic to keep the listener interested so these are things that i think you should check out and explore on your own now the second part of the tune which is is the chorus now the first part is still an a but i think he moves to using a a with the first finger bar barring the thinnest four strings the reason i think that is because of that top note one of these days seems to fit nicer with the melody and I'm, I'm, I think I can hear that in there. The second chord he goes to is an E minor. Now it's that same thing again that I, I feel like this is what I'm hearing. I'm hearing this note, not the open D string. But again, video evidence and, you know, because I'm a nerd and watching that stuff, it looks like Neil's just playing second and third fingers on the thickest two strings, open thinnest four strings. And, it, and maybe that's it, maybe that fourth string is just muted by the third finger. Okay, but I'm, I'm hearing it like that, hearing, hearing this note. So you can either approach it as second finger on the second fret, thicker string, muting the fifth string, third finger, second fret, fourth string, thinnest three strings open. Or you could use fingers two, three and four in a row, like an A chord in the wrong place there. Definitely seen Neil play it like that before, so that could be what's going on sometimes. Like I said, you know, there's limited videos of him playing this live, so I've just gone by, you know, first of all, what my ears tell me. I always start with by listening, and then I go through and try and uh, check and see if my my ears are telling me the right stuff. That's m my process. So um, up to you, which which way you approach playing that E minor chord. Then he goes to a D chord. But again, I'm not sure he's using that D chord the same as he did in the verse. It sounds to me like he's playing a regular standard D. I'm not hearing that note in there. Sometimes it sounds like he's got little finger going down on the fourth fret of the thinner string. So it sounds like a regular D chord. And again, it, it does fit nicer with the melody there to have this change from the, the kind of the drone string approach of the verses into the chorus to have this one of these days. I'm gonna sit down and write a long letter Know all the good friends I've known After the D chord, whichever way you're gonna play it, there's a B. Now, Neil doesn't play a B chord like this. Neil plays a B with his thumb reaching over to play that bass note and the third finger. And I can, I can almost do it, but it, it kind of hurts my thumb, to be honest. It, it hurts in here. I've been trying to do it for a few years and I still can't. So, and, and he keeps his third finger nice and square. I guess it's just hand shape, right? So I would always play a kind of a standard B chord. I might put my first finger to cover the thicker string as well. I'm not hearing it, but again, if Neil's playing it that way, then it's gonna be next to impossible to not play that thicker string. The way he's strumming for that note not to ring out would be pretty uh, possible, but unlikely. Um, so I would tend to go for, for that B. I'm not hearing anything on the thinner string there. So just third finger barring string, uh, fourth fret strings, two, three, and four, and then the note B, uh, second fret and the fifth string. That's the important little bit there. Uh, and then after that, it's going just from A to F sharp minor, A to F sharp minor, back to D, which I think is the version that he plays in the verses. And then he slides it up two frets and he's not playing a bass note. He's leaving it to the bass player to play the bass note at that point. So, won't be long, won't be long, won't be long. Now, it kind of felt weird for me to do that, so I've been going, won't be long, won't be long, and putting the root note there with the little finger down in the seventh fret of the fifth string. 
so a full C-shaped bar chord. Now, I'm pretty sure Neil doesn't use that shape when he's playing. Possibly there's examples of him doing that, but I've not seen any. So that's not a very Neil Young thing to do, but if you're doing your own version, it just, to me, it seems to work a little bit better. So that's up to you. So let me take you through that whole section again so you can see all of those chords in order. So we had the A. Sorry, we had A using the first finger bar. One of these days to the E minor. I'm gonna sit down and write a long letter to D. To all the good friends to the B I've known. Back to A. One of these F sharp minors. A. One of these F sharp minors to A. One of these F sharp minors and a D to an E then to A. After that first chorus, there's a few other little creative things that I want to mention as well that I think are quite interesting. The first one, you can hear him play third finger lifting off to the open second string with that first finger grab so as, as well as Neil playing a down strum with the thumb and then up strokes with the first finger sometimes he's using the thumb as a down strum with the first finger playing a note one two three and so I'm doing three together thumb and first finger and then first finger is doing a little up strum. Two, three, and one, one, two, three, and four. One on beat four may or may not happen, depends on the, the pattern. But that's also just be, being aware that that's one of those things Neil's do. He's very consistent with the hand motion, but sometimes he's, he plucks the, the, he does a down strum with the thumb, or it's kind of a, a it's basically he's just picking with the thumb, but it feels like a down motion if you're keeping your hand moving. But, It's kind of funny this I'm rambling a little bit here but it, it is a it's a bit rambly the style of it because it's not so defined it's not so definite and it's really difficult to try and nail it down to a particular thing because it feels like it's kind of different and, and a bit fluid and moving depending on where it is in the tune and how he's playing it so it's one that I think that you want to experiment with a li little on your own you know um, but that's one thing he's doing And then there's this other, where he's, he's lifting second finger off on the D. So it's almost like an F sharp minor on the top, but it makes it a D major seven. So you get the A, sus two, F sharp minor. And also that note kind of rings out while he gets to the chord. So he gets those bass notes, plays them. That's still ringing out. Then the first finger's going down. So after that first chorus, if you listen to the original recording, you'll hear him experiment a little bit more with the way he's playing the, the different chords. The, the trick for all Neil stuff is this consistency of the strumming hand. That seems to be the overriding technical thing that I try to stay aware of whenever I'm learning or practicing his tunes or transcribing them, whatever. I'm trying to bear in mind that that's almost certainly what he's doing. And then I let that guide my ears to try and find, you know, to make that connection between what I'm hearing and what might be going on with my hand. Okay, that's, I think that's part of the game when you're transcribing stuff and learning things by ear is having some knowledge of the guy that you're transcribing and how that might inform how he's making the sounds. And, you know, again, this, I, I would recommend that you guys are experimenting and trying to make this tune your own version uh, and using Neil's uh, guitar parts as kind of a guide and a thing to inspire you, that, you know, give you some ideas that you might incorporate into completely different tunes. You know, um, I think that's 
it would be the the wise and musical approach to learning this kind of tune. So look, I really hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you dig what I do. Remember, there's loads more Neil Young, loads more Neil Young over on the website. So click that link in the description. You'll be able to see the big list of them there. If you just type Neil Young in the top, they'll all just magically appear for you. So hope you enjoy not just this, but all of those tunes as well. And I'll see you for plenty more very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.